Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Springer from Kelly's Choice, and we are going to talk today about our tips for heart health because February is Heart Health Month. But we should be thinking about heart health every single month because, sadly, as you can see from the fast facts here, that it truly is the leading cause of death for both men and women. That is really sad. So every 43 seconds, somebody has a heart attack. But to give you a positivity note that we actually can reverse this and prevent it from happening. So when getting into heart health and talking about cardiovascular health, we want to talk about actually how we're going to do exactly what I just said of preventing heart health. So we know that you can actually reduce your risk of heart disease or stroke by 80% when we eat foods that are healthy for us. So what are those foods? How do we do this? Well, it's not just one thing. It's not just a pill in a bottle. It's not just fixing one type of the diet. It's actually everything in the whole, which we're gonna get into today. So when talking about heart health, like I said, it's important for your diet to make sure that we are improving it and looking at the big picture. It's not just one single food that can magically make you healthy. So I was recently at an entrepreneur group and someone got up and said, put this in your water and this will make you live to your hundred years old. It's not that simple. There's no magic cure and there's nothing that's going to make you live to a hundred. It's putting together the knowledge of education that makes the most sense. All right. So getting into what we should eat less of, and also we're going to get into what to eat more of. So when we talk about foods that actually can cause heart disease, we talk about trans fats. What are trans fats? Well, it was really funny. I was watching a movie with my kids the other day and it was like this teen movie and the girl in the car, they were pulling into a fast food restaurant and she said, no, we shouldn't eat there because it has a lot of trans fats. Well, I bet that actor had no idea what that line actually meant. So I want to explain that to you. Trans fats are really edgy. So if you can think, think about something that's really edgy and it can get stuck in our bloodstream and when it gets stuck, that can cause inflammation. And because we have inflammation, that can actually increase cholesterol levels. Okay. So it kind of goes in this line here. So this comes from our deep fried foods or whenever you see partially hydronated or hydronated foods, this means trans fats. So back in the seventies, they started actually making trans fats by heating oils to a certain temperature and they added a hydrogen bond. Why'd they do this? Well, it actually made it so that packaged foods would have a longer shelf life. That's why they did it. But when they started making trans fats and putting them in foods, they also saw a complete direct correlation between adding trans fats and heart disease. So about 10 years ago, the American um, USDA, FDA, decided that we're gonna pull trans fats out of the diet. So the majority of fats have been actually pulled out, but you'll still see some things that say partially hydronated or hydronated stay away from those types of foods. Also, if you are cooking oils in your house to the point where they smoke, you've actually turned that beautiful, maybe extra virgin olive oil to a trans fats, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're staying away from trans fats and not creating them in our own homes. And also saturated fats like whole fat dairy and fatty meats can actually be edgy too and cause a higher inflammation marker. Also, anything that is refined carbohydrate is not going to have a fiber source. That simple carbohydrate can also raise inflammation markers and lead to heart disease. So getting into, like we were just talking about, it's not all red meat. And I kind of want to make this point. There's a lot of red meat that is actually very low in saturated fat. For instance, a tenderloin can be extremely low in saturated fat or 95.5 ground beef. 95.5 ground beef means that 95% of that item is going to be meat and 5% is the fat. So that's a very, very lean source with low saturated fat. 
Okay. So when we're talking about dairy, we want to make sure that we are getting a low fat dairy as well, because dairy naturally has saturated fat. So if we get low fat or no fat dairy, it's going to ensure that we are going to get a low saturated fat level. We have our English shutter puppy with our intern right now, which is really funny. So Danny just came into the room. Um, nothing like working from home during COVID. So this is where whenever we're having animal products, you just want to make sure you're getting a lean source. Animal products have a great um, profile in the way of protein, having all essential nine amino acids, also having nutrients and vitamins. So you don't necessarily have to stay away from animal products. Just make sure they are lean animal sources. So what do we want to eat more of? We want to make sure we're getting in healthy fats into our diets, raw nuts, olive oil, fish oils, flax seeds, and avocados. As you can also see from a lot of these items here, they also have fiber. Fiber is the key to truly preventing heart disease, making sure we're getting fiber rich sources throughout the day. So the goal at Kelly Choice, and we're going to talk about fiber later on in this presentation too, is to try to see if you can get around five to 10 grams of fiber per meal. The average American is getting probably around five grams per day. Fiber truly helps to spur on HDL cholesterol, which helps pull other cholesterol out of the body and get it out. It also helps rough up the sides of our digestive tract. Fiber is essential. So getting foods like nuts and flax seeds and avocados and fruits and vegetables are going to ensure that we're getting the right amount of fiber source. So again, what should we eat? And there you go. Fiber is going to be all over this presentation. You're going to hear it multiple times because of what I just said. But when I say the words fiber, usually to my patients, they're not really sure what foods contain fiber. So like I said, the foods that we just mentioned, the avocados, the nuts, the seeds, but you can also get fiber from whole grain cereals, breads, pasta and legumes. So make sure when you're looking at the label of the breads and cereals and pastas that it says 100% or whole. Don't be tricked like I was. A few years ago, I went to go get hot dog rolls. Yes, hot dogs. Yes. But I wanted to be a great dietitian mom and I went to buy the whole wheat hot dog rolls. Well, I just bought wheat. It didn't say 100% or the word whole and the whole grain was actually the fifth ingredient down. So basically it was white bread with brown food coloring. So you want to make sure that you're looking for 100% or whole. A good way to do this is turn over the box and look at the ingredients and in the ingredients, if it just says, for instance, farro, quinoa, oats, that's going to ensure it is a whole grain. Okay. If it says enriched or processed or refined, that means it's been processed and you're probably reducing that fiber source. Also, we want to make sure that we're getting in omega-3s and protein, and this can come from our fish, shellfish, and poultry. This is going to also help to reduce heart disease because omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Also getting in calcium and proteins, um, you can get these in, in the way of eggs, skim milk, low fat, non-fat cheeses, and also unsweetened yogurt. Just the other day, I had a patient who said, I love vanilla yogurt. I know it has sugar. What should I do? Well, just buy the no fat or low fat Greek yogurt and add in your own vanilla. It tastes absolutely delicious. And you're going to be cutting back on those simple carbohydrates. So how are we going to reduce saturated and trans fats? Well, we want to make sure that we're looking at labels, looking at to see if it actually says partially hydronated or hydronated. And also if we are staying away from fried foods, that's going to help a lot as well. It's going to help to cut out those trans fats out of our diets. Also making sure that we're getting in some great um, foods like limiting solid fats, but maybe going towards some liquid um, fats. Also, we can make sure, like I said, we're reading those labels, um, changing those habits. So we're thinking about snacks in a different way. We're thinking about snacks in the way of whole foods versus fried products that may be in the, um, the snack aisle.
Okay. So back in the 90s, I don't know how many people are on this presentation today are going to be watching this presentation that remember the 90s. All right, so let's go back to 1995 and open my mom's refrigerator. What are you going to see? Every single thing in that refrigerator had a non-fat sticker on it. Why was fat so bad? Well, a researcher back in the 70s found out that fat had some type of correlation with heart disease. So we went through an entire decade with cutting fats out of the diet. Fats are a macronutrient. We need to have them. Fats are important for a host of things, but one of the things in nutrition that I want to talk about is fats actually can have omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6s. These are essential, meaning that the body does not make them. So we want to make sure that we're getting omega-3s and omega-6s. So where do these come from? Well, omega-3s can come from both fish-based and they can also come from plants. The plants are called ALA, you might see that on the label, and the fish base is EPA and DHA. Now the, the fish-based omega-3 is more potent, so your body can use it more readily, but they're both great. So if you're not eating fish at least twice a week, I highly recommend working with your pharmacist and your doctor and your dietitian to make sure that you're adding an omega-3 supplement into your diet. In America right now, we get a lot of omega-6s from our vegetable oil. So we're usually pretty good with those, but we're kind of lacking in the way of omega-3s and those are anti-inflammatory. So make sure you are getting a good source of tuna, salmon, sardines, getting in that fish-based omega-3 is going to truly help to reduce inflammation and reduce your risk of heart disease. Also, fat helps absorb fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Think about if you didn't have fat in your diet, you wouldn't be able to absorb these nutrients. Vitamin A, vitamin E are antioxidants. These also can help to reduce your risk of heart disease. And we know even more about um, vitamin D, vitamin D being crucial to the health of our diet. Also, vitamin K is a vitamin that actually can regulate the thickness of our blood and clotting. So all of those are extremely important and fat is needed to absorb them. Also getting in monounsaturated fats. These are our liquid fats, like our extra virgin olive oil, our canola oil, avocado oil. These fats all can help to lower inflammation. So again, not all fats are bad. Like I said, you can get those omega-3s from the fatty fish, from flaxseed, canola oil, and walnuts. And you also can get polyunsaturated fats from your nuts, seeds. So lots of ways to get in those monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Like I said, vegetable, um, the omega-6s come from vegetable oils, soys, nuts. So we're getting a lot of those in the diet, which it's fine. We're good with the omega-6, but I had a patient recently who went out to get a supplement of omega-3. So she thought it'd be best if she got the omega-3, the omega-6 and omega-9. <laughs> we don't need usually to supplement with some things that we already have in the diet. So if you're not eating fish, just get the omega-3. All right. So the ways to get in those monounsaturated fats can be avocados, almonds, cashews, peanuts, pecans, and also these nut butters. Um, these are great ways to get on uh, the monounsaturated. Plus a benefit of the foods you see here, they also have fiber. So this is what, like kind of the double whammy against heart disease is getting fiber and healthy fats. Plus these foods also have tons of nutrients. So they're gonna be fantastic of really getting the body what it needs to help prevent heart disease. So you don't want to replace the bad fats with sugar. So again, this is what happened in the nineties. If anyone remembers back to snack well cookies, this is the epitome of the nineties. So people were taking fat out of the diet and just putting tons of sugar in. And this is why we're also having issues with heart disease. When we have an excess amount of sugar in our bloodstream, it can actually act as like shards of glass because it's very edgy and can cut a nick. So when that happens, that can raise inflammation level. 
the body tells ourselves that we need to start creating more cholesterol in the liver to help heal these nicks and cuts. What happens is the liver goes, no problem. We'll just pick it up with the LDL and we'll just drop it off at the site. So having an excessive amount of sugar in the diet can actually lead directly to heart disease. So we never really made that correlation. And so we, and still we started looking at all of these foods that were actually jam packed with sugar. So we want to make sure that we are not getting, of course, the saturated and trans fats, but also just be aware or leery of foods that are um, loaded with sugar. So some tips to cutting down on sugar are just making those right changes. I was talking to my neighbor this morning while we were working out and she said, it wasn't until I actually started checking my glucose level, it was just a short period of time that I realized foods that were raising up my sugar levels. She said, I couldn't believe how many salad dressings had added sugar. She said, also, I couldn't believe like even a cough drop could raise my sugar levels so much. So there's sugars added to so many foods in our American diet that we want to make sure that we're looking at labels, make your own dressings, put together your own barbecue sauce and be careful when dining out. There's lots of ways we can cut back on sugar. What I find is the majority is coming from our drinks, our iced teas, our lemonades, our coffee drinks are really bumping up on our sugar sources. So look to see what you are drinking and cut those back. Also getting in with salt and processed foods. Now salt is kind of, it might sound strange, but it's my least concern. If we truly can bring down our saturated and trans fats and bring down our simple sugars, salt is actually a natural electrolyte. It's only when we eat tons of processed foods that our sodium levels can go way too high. Also, if we're dehydrated, if we're not getting enough water, this can be a problem too. So if you are getting canned items, for instance, just rinse them off. You'll rinse off 40% of the sodium. So you can still have these items, but just make sure you're getting enough hydration and just rinse those canned items. Also by using herbs and spices, you don't need as much salt. Now I was a salt lover my whole life and I can't believe that adding herbs and spices adds so much flavor to foods that I'm not using the salt shaker at dinner anymore. It's amazing of how much they can add to that meal that you don't need to add a ton of salt. All right, so getting into the whole grains, what does this actually mean? So when I say the word whole grains, I mean, we're talking about three parts. We have a bran, a germ, and an endosperm. Three parts. Why is that important to understand? When, when you have a processed foods, it means that something's been changed. And what's been changed about this grain is that the bran and the germ have been removed and you're just left with the endosperm, which is like basically just glucose, which will break down to simple sugars. So we wanna make sure that we are getting that fiber to stabilize those blood sugar levels and also reduce our risk of heart disease. So when we're thinking about breakfast foods, think about those foods that may have whole grains. Look at the labels. Does your cereal have fiber? Does your toast do your bagels? What are you eating? And maybe try a new grain. In this house, we love the grain farro. It's the original grain of Italy. It tastes delicious. It has like a nutty flavor. You can have it hot and add it in with vegetables or with your meats, or you can have it cold on top of salads. It's a great grain. We actually had stuffed peppers last night and we added farro and quinoa in. It was delicious. Um, also making sure you're bulking up on baking by using whole grain flour, a whole wheat flour. Flour. And also you can add flaxseed, just make sure it's ground because then you'll get the beneficial value of it. Make sure to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables. All the different colors are going to bring in different antioxidants. So mix up your colors and get that variety. What I recommend is trying each week to see if you can get a variety of three different fruits and vegetables. So you mix it up. 
we're definitely creatures of habit and we tend to go towards the same items every single time. But by getting a variety of foods, it's going to make dinner time or lunchtime much more fun. And it's also going to make sure you're mixing up those antioxidants. So try to get different colors during the day. And remember, frozen fruits and veggies are just as good as fresh. And they're going to be about a third in the cost and they're not going to go bad. So you can definitely add in some of your frozen vegetables as well and make sure to add in fruits and vegetables for snacks. So when getting into our fiber rich sources, I told you we're going to talk about this throughout. Um, one more thing to say about fiber. Fiber comes in different varieties insoluble, insoluble fiber. So when we talk about increasing our fiber rich sources, we have to talk about increasing hydration. So one of them actually attracts water and brings it into the digestive tract. That's our soluble fiber. The insoluble fiber helps move things along. So different foods like beans, vegetables will have a different mixture of insoluble and soluble fibers. And people usually ask me, well, which one is best? You need them both. They do different things in the body. And when we eat whole foods like beans and vegetables and fruits, they're in the perfect combination of the soluble and insoluble. So I wanna make sure you mix up your whole grains, your fruits, your vegetables, your legumes, your nuts and seeds to make sure you're getting both your insoluble and soluble fiber and make sure you have the hydration there so you can pull for that soluble fiber. Both have definitely been linked to helping your heart stay healthy. So controlling portion size, and I love these little portion size hands because I think it makes it easy. So when we talk about protein, I want you to look at your fist. Your fist is about how much of protein you should be getting. So if you are a little kid, you should be getting about that much protein in your fist size. If you are a huge man, your fist is going to be bigger than the kid or mine. So that's how much protein we should be getting. Again, vegetables are about the same. Fat is the end of your thumb and carbs in the hand of your palm here. So this is where you can still, if you're hungry, increase your vegetables, have a little bit more whole grains, um, but really truly it's great if you can use your fist as a size to kind of go off of. And rekindle home cooking. When we eat at home, we tend to eat healthier. Um, when we eat out, they tend to add in maybe some more oils, some more sodium. If you go to any of the chain restaurants, they'll actually provide you with all the nutrition information. I do this on our dining out presentation and it's shocking to all of my clients. They cannot believe how much added sodium and saturated fat there are to the foods when eating out. So when you make it at home, you're going Going to make it healthier and you can definitely make fun meals for the entire family. Something that we do here is we come up with theme nights. So we have, for instance, you know, Tuesdays is tacos and we do like Wednesday is um, Italian. We can have Thursdays as breakfast for dinner. So coming up with theme nights gives you some fun ideas that you can put through the whole month. So in summary, we want to make sure that we are truly reducing saturated and trans fats and adding in some healthy fats. You don't want to replace the bad fats with sugar, and we do want to make sure we're cutting back on sugar. Um, in the way of processed foods, just make sure you're limiting those amount because of the sodium. And if you do have canned items, rinse them off and you'll rinse off 40% of that sodium. Also make sure you're trying to get whole grains, look for 100% or the word whole, that will ensure that you're getting a whole grain. Eat a variety of fruits and vegetables for all the colors of the rainbow to make sure you're getting the antioxidants and also fiber rich sources. This is a great way to incorporate fiber rich foods and get all the colors. Also watch your portion sizes and definitely try to do some more home cooking. And as you can see to end this presentation, we're talking about water. Water can help reduce inflammation. It helps with that um, soluble fiber and it also can help to do so much in the body. So your take home challenge today is to start reading food labels. 
Look to see all of the added sugars that may be in the foods. Look to see if you see those words partially hydronated or hydronated. Look for serving sizes, sodium and sugar. Also focus on heart healthy snacks and swap some water for your favorite beverages or a few times a day. So thank you so much. I hope that you go to Kelly's Choice underscore nutrition on Instagram. Go to our website at kellyschoice.org to book an appointment. But we have so many options for you from our private practice to work site wellness. We're excited to have you all a part of our community and getting this information um, every single month. So thank you so much for your time today. Look forward to working with you in the future. Anything you may need, definitely just go to kellyschoice.org. Thanks and have a great day.